Hi! Today we're going to be talking about midpoints and endpoints of segments. Remember, the midpoint is the point that divides a segment exactly in half. And we talked about that we use tick marks in geometry to show congruence. And tick marks are just little marks on the segment that indicate that those two sides are exactly the same. Okay? In case you've forgotten from last week, congruence, remember, just means equal measures. And you know the symbol for equals. The symbol for congruence is just like the equals but with a little squiggle. So that equals with the squiggle on top just means congruent. Okay? So in my example, if I had letters here, A, B, and C, I could say that B is a midpoint of segment AC, which would also tell me that segment AB is congruent to segment BC. Segment AB is congruent to segment BC, which means if they're congruent, that means they have equal measures. So that means I can also say the distance from A to B is equal to the distance from B to C. So all three of these I can say only if I see the tick marks or I'm told I have a midpoint or I can mathematically prove I have a midpoint. Okay? All right, so the next word, this is going to be new for us. Sorry, that is the bell to begin second period. The next word that's going to be new to us is segment bisector. And we'll use bisector in a few different ways this year. But a segment bisector is something, a point, segment, ray, line, plane, anything that intersects a segment at its midpoint. Okay? So when I look at my picture, I do know that I have a midpoint because I have this segment AB and I can see the two tick marks. So I know that M is a midpoint, which means M is also a segment bisector because it's a point that's dividing this segment exactly in half. Notice I could also use a segment. So I could look at segment DC. If I were to erase the arrows on each end and just look at the segment, segment DC would be a segment bisector. Even though it's not bisected, DM looks much shorter than MC, right? So it itself is not bisected, but segment DC is a bisector of segment AB. I could also use a ray or a line or even a plane. So if I were to cut off one arrow, now I have ray DC is a segment bisector of segment AB. I could leave it just like it is and I could say line DC is a segment bisector of segment AB. Okay, so anything that cuts that segment in half is a segment bisector. When we see the word bisector, we're always going to remember cuts in half equally. So anytime I see the word bisector, I know I'm going to end up with two equal halves. So that's something we always want to remember as like a helpful hint when we're doing problems, that if I see this word bisector, I know that's going to mean two equal halves. Okay, it's going to divide into two equal halves anytime I see that word bisector. All right, let's look at, an, look at an example. It says that I'm given that point M is a midpoint of segment, because there's no arrows, RS. And then I want to complete each statement. I have statement one and statement two. Since I don't have a picture, the first thing I should do is draw myself one. So I'm going to draw segment RS. Segment R. S and M is the midpoint. So I'm going to put M where it looks like it's in the middle, but that's not enough. I also have to add the tick marks. Okay, so I've drawn my picture. Let's see what we're going to do next. So next, I'm going to label, I'm going to look at number one and say, okay, RS, the distance from R to S equals 10 inches. 
So the distance from R to S equals 10 inches. It says, well then how long is it from S to M? So how long is this piece right here? Well, if the whole thing is 10, and I've got a midpoint, that means it's dividing it into two equal halves, I know each of these sides have to be the same, so they both have to be 5, because 5 plus 5 makes my 10. So 5. Make sure you use your units. Since I know I've got 10 inches, that means half of that is 5 inches. Okay? Now, a lot of times in geometry, we'll give you one picture and we'll ask you to use it for multiple problems. So now when I go to problem number two, it's going to have different numbers. I can't keep the 10 and the 5. It's going to be different numbers. Because notice it says R to M is 12 yards. So this time from R to M, just this piece right here, is 12 yards. Okay, so that means this can't be 10 inches anymore. That wouldn't make sense. So this is a new problem, which means we start fresh with new numbers. Okay, but we still use the same direction. So M is still the midpoint, which means if it's 12 yards on one side, it's also 12 yards on the other side, which means I do know how long the whole thing is. The whole thing is 12 yards plus 12 yards, which is 24 yards. Yards. So notice I used my segment addition property from last week to get that this was 24 yards. Okay? So now let's see what it's asking me. It wants to know how far is it from M to S. So M to S is 12 yards. And then it's asking me how far is it from R to S. R to S is the whole thing, 24 yards. Okay. Now sometimes you will have a little bit more algebra to do with your problems. If I look at the next one, it says to find the value of y if q is a midpoint of segment PR. So as soon as I see this word midpoint, I'm going to make sure the picture reflects that. So q is a midpoint, that means I know this side is equal to this side. Okay, which means I know that 9y minus 2 is equal to 14 plus 5y. When we did this the other day, we added these two numbers together when we did the segment addition property, but that's because we knew how long the whole thing was. So we could do 9y minus 2 plus 14y plus 5y equals, and then we had what it equaled, but I don't know what it equals now. But I do know that these two equal each other. So I can do 9y minus 2 is equal to 14 plus 5y. I can do that because of the word midpoint. If I didn't have that word midpoint, I would be stuck on this problem. Okay? So now we just need to solve this for y. So the first thing I'm going to do is get all my y's on the same side by moving the smaller one. So I'm going to subtract 5y on both sides so that I end up with 4y minus 2 equals 14 plus 0, right? That equals 0, 5y minus 5y. Then I'm going to add my 2 to both sides to get the 4y by itself. When I do that, 4y plus 0 is just 4y equals 14 plus 2 is 16. Divide both sides by 4, division property of equality. So 4 over 4 is 1y equals 16 over 4 is 4. Okay, so I know that y equals 4 some kind of units. I don't know what kind of units they are. Okay, so I did find the value of y, but wait, there's more. I also want to find pq, qr, and pr. So for pq, I know that PQ from P to Q is 9 times Y minus 2. But I know what Y is now. Y is 4. So I can do 9 times 4 is 36. And 36 minus 2 is 34. So from P to Q, it's 34 units. Okay, 
which means when I look at the next one, find QR. QR is this side. QR, we shouldn't have to do the math because QR should be 34. But it's always a good idea to do the math because that way if I made an algebra mistake over here when I found 4, by checking it this way, I'll know immediately if I made a mistake. If I plug the 4 in here and I solve this equation and it doesn't equal 34, I know I need to come back here and check my math. So 14 plus 5 times 4 is 20. 14 plus 20 is, thank goodness, 34. So I can feel confident that I'm going to get this problem correct. Okay, so then last but not least, it wants the answer to how long is it from P to R. So from P to R, the whole thing is going to be, I have to travel, I have to use my segment addition from last week, P to Q plus Q to R. So I have to go 34 plus another 34. 34 plus 34 is 68 units. There's my four answers to this one problem. Okay? All right, when we come back, we'll do another problem that's similar to this one, and then we'll look at coordinate planes and how to find pit midpoints there on your coordinate plane. Okay? Thank you for watching.